Hello and welcome back to Mark's Lionel Trains. You are looking at the completed largest train structure I have ever constructed. Uh, over five and a half feet long, this bridge is, is pretty massive. I uh, toyed with uh, various different construction methods and uh, I ended up using an I-beam construction method. So what I decided to do, because it's so long, it needed to be really strong, I sandwiched uh, two one by twos in between half inch plywood. Uh, the half inch plywood is four and a half inches wide and over five feet or five and a half feet long. And uh, that gives me the necessary strength to, to make this span. And uh, it uh, turned out uh, way better than I thought. Uh, it really turned out awesome. I did decide to not go with the blinking light on top of the bridge there. It just wasn't scale and it looked a little bit out of place. And the bridge isn't up on the piers in this location, so I think it looks better without the blinking light. Give you a look at the bridge from this perspective, uh, looking at the other side of the layout. I did use the existing end truss bridges and the two girder bridges that I had in the uh, other bridge. And it turned out really nice. And that's the finished product. I don't, I couldn't find a little red ribbon or anything, so I used some old uh, wrapping paper and I cut a little red ribbon there. And the first train's gonna bust through that red ribbon as we christen our bridge. So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all the new subscribers and, and thank all the existing subscribers that have been here, getting on almost 500 subscribers. Thank you very much. And I think I'm going to show you now some of the scenery that I worked on uh, the last week and a half. This is the first section that I worked on after the bridge was installed. It took about a week and a half to install the bridge, and then another week and a half to install all of the scenery back. Uh, all these trees here I had to take out and replace uh, when we straightened out the track. The track was curved more, and yeah, I had to definitely do that. All these trees I was able to leave in. And there's the chillin' grillin' trailer, all installed with people and the tulips. Uh, those were interesting to install. And I also put in the Woodland Scenics tin shed. The tin shed didn't have any lights, so I bought the uh, gooseneck lamps and put them in. The log pile uh, was really cool. I glued all those logs together uh, with Omer's glue, and that turned out really cool. I love the chillin' grillin' trailer so much, I picked up the double-decker trailer as well. And yes, this is an advertisement for the Woodland Scenics Gentle Grips. They came in very handy standing up all the people and planting all those tulips. While I was replacing track, and I'm able to drill through this section of the layout, I was able to install the Lionel sensor track. And I have that programmed to activate the bell on the legacy locomotives as they approach the railroad crossing. The sensor track plugs into my LCS Wi-Fi modem right there, and then this plugs into my uh, legacy cab too. The Woodland Scenics lighting system is controlled by this controller right here. I can plug up to four lights into here. I can also plug a light into here or another one of these extension hubs. Uh, the power supply is plugged into there and you can hook as many extension hubs as you want to, I think up to four on this particular situation. I have this uh, loose in here just so it's easier for me to access it and plug things in and unplug things. There is the chillin' grillin' trailer in the uh, nighttime or dusk time with the lights, the interior lights illuminated and you can see the gooseneck lamps for the shed. I'll give you a close-up of that shed. The little shed did turn out pretty awesome with the gooseneck lamps. They are CA glued to the, the thing, and they're pretty easy to hook up, so. You have to drill rather large holes in your layout to get the uh, the Molex plugs through the, the bench work. There's a view of the double-decker trailer. I don't know if you can see it, but the TV flickers in the living room like a real TV would back in the 50s or the 60s. It's pretty awesome. I don't think the camera can translate that as well. The trailer park turned out pretty good. Uh, the Woodland Scenic street lamps turned out awesome, and uh, it really turned out good. And I'll show you the water tower. We got a water tower for the railroad now. I have been looking for a water tower for the layout for the longest time, and they're pretty expensive and pretty big, some of them. Uh, and this I found at Menards for $39.99. Uh, and it is just awesome. It's an excellent, it actually has a, it's a weighted 
articulated spout, which is really cool. It goes up and down, which is really neat with a real lead weight on there. It's just awesome. It fits perfectly with the layout. You can even see in the, you can see the trailer at the back of the trailer over from this location a little bit. A better bit. view of that water tower. For 40 bucks, you can't go wrong with this. And it, of course, comes with Jack. And there's the, the back of the trailers. It looks pretty cool. Okay, I think we're gonna christen our bridge.
All righty, thank you very much for watching the new bridge installation on Mark's Lionel Trains as the tie ejector makes its way across the bridge. I'd like to thank everyone for watching all my videos and thank you for your thumbs up and your subscriptions and your wonderful comments. And if you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, this has been a really fun video to make and I hope it's as much fun for you all to watch. Thank you very much for watching Mark's Lionel Trains.